You're about to meet a woman who says her online Romeo may well have handed her a death sentence, knowingly passing on HIV, and she's not alone. Here's Michelle Sagan. Philippe Padu was an insatiable modern-day Casanova who could boast of countless sexual conquests. He would meet women and uh, they would fall in love with him pretty quickly. Among them, Diane Reeve. Mm, it wasn't love at first sight, I don't think, but it was, like I say, it was a little exotic. But Diane would learn to her horror, it was almost a love affair to die for and a landmark case that gives new meaning to the charge of assault with a deadly weapon. Which was his HIV-infected semen. Now, in a jaw-dropping prison interview with Crime Watch Daily, Padu actually alleges it was Diane who gave him the dreaded disease. She's guilty of sin. And the unrepentant Lothario unleashes still more venom at Diane and five other women he was found guilty of recklessly infecting during unprotected sex. I wish they, they burn in hell, basically, and Diane especially. Diane was a lonely Dallas divorcee with grown children when she met Padu on an online dating site. He was French, he was tall, dark, and handsome. And the native Parisian, also divorced with grown children, had all the bells and whistles. He drove a Corvette. He was charming. He was soft-spoken, uh, very polite, very well-mannered. He won you over very quickly. He didn't waste any time. He seemed to have this aura about him. He had a very uh, magnetic personality. Padu was also a rich and successful data security analyst, and he and Diane had something special in common. They were both martial arts experts, which seemed like kismet to Diane. That was one of the ways that we connected. How long did it take you to become a couple? Not too terribly long. I'd say less than four months, and we had the exclusivity talk. So you were exclusive. He told me that we were exclusive. A love-struck Diane thought she had found an exciting Mr. Right. It was a great time for me. I liked to travel. I needed somebody to travel with. He liked to travel too, and we went lots and lots of places. We were on the road all the time. And you two were really traveling the world. We were, we were. We had been to Paris and Rome and all kinds of different places. But then, when Padu asked her to help find him some travel documents, Diane stumbled upon something else, the proverbial little black book. It was black. It was black. And it was filled. And it was filled with lots of women's names. Diane started calling the numbers and discovered to her horror that Padu had been living a secret other life of rampant infidelity. There were allegedly a lot of women. Well, allegedly is a relative word because I talked to most of them, so it wasn't just allegedly. I knew. You knew. Eventually. He had other girlfriends. Yeah. Girlfriends, one night stands, you know, people that he would meet, this, that, and the other place. It doesn't matter. One of the women she spoke to actually thought she had an exclusive, serious relationship with Padu, just like Diane. She said, you're his girlfriend. I'm his girlfriend. And I went, uh-oh. No kidding. I didn't say no kidding, but you know, that's what we say on television when we can't say what I really said. What did you talk about? We both talked about being conned because he had a story for me, he had a story for her. Do you approach him and say, I met your girlfriend? I did. And what was his reaction? I didn't give him much of an opportunity really to react. I didn't really care what his explanation was. What I wanted to do was establish that that wasn't okay and we're not gonna do that anymore. And what did he say? He kind of looked at me and kind of gulped. Diane foolishly forgave Padu. Was that a tough decision? It was because, you know, that's not something that any woman wants to have to deal with. I had been without a significant other in my life for two years before I found Philippe. 
and I didn't want to let go of that. You think, look, I've already put all this time and effort into this relationship, and if I bail out now, I've just lost everything. Diane and Padu even discussed moving in together. Things are moving forward. Things are moving forward. Or so she initially thought. Was he still cheating on you then? I found out later that he was. With whom? Well, you know, how, how much time do you have? <laughs> Diane would accidentally learn Padu had never stopped cheating on her when he told her he was too ill to go to her daughter's wedding. Something told me I needed to just check on him and see how he was feeling. And when I pulled into his driveway, the house was dark and nobody was home. So I sat and I waited and I cried. And when he finally arrived home, all hell broke loose. We even had a, I'm embarrassed to say, a gratuitous car chase scene. Because he saw me in the driveway and didn't stop, kept going, and I thought, oh no. Did you find him? I did. And we did have a screaming match. I knew it was over, he knew it was over. That was the end of it? That was it. But Padu had left Diane with a surprise parting gift. So you go to the doctor mm -hmm. and they say, well, we have a little bit of bad news for you. Next, a woman's worst nightmare brings Diane's world crashing down. My niece hit the floor. 